All right, so <clears throat> I'm having trouble figuring out how to edit videos, so I'm just going to try to do this all at once. This is about restoring your foreskin, foreskin restoration. It's something that's been going on for almost as long as genital mutilation has been a thing, right? So what is it? Why would you want to do it? This is mostly just how to do it, okay? So uh, I'm going to explain three methods that I've used. I mean, there's, there's tons of other methods out there, too. Uh, so definitely do your research, see what might fit best for you. But I, I found that some methods are probably easier to do early on. So um, I'm going to go through that. First, I want to talk about what foreskin restoration is and maybe a little why you would want to do what it's like. So this is, let's say... This is your penis, all right? So what a foreskin looks like is it's going to be like, hold on. This is a really shitty visual, FYI, but you know how YouTube likes to take things down, right? Mm -hmm. So I didn't want it to be too realistic looking. Okay, so here's the head of your dick, all right? Here's the foreskin. It covers the head of your dick and protects it, and it moves back and forth, all right? So when you get, you know, cut up, circumcised, as they call it, they stick a knife in here, and they cut all this. So this is actually a fold of skin. It's not a flap of skin. That's another thing. Like, we really got fucked, you know? <laughs> if you think about the whole, uh, the way that we're sold on, on circumcision, they, they'll say, like, oh, it looks better. Or, which is was fucking retarded, you think about it. Chicks are really attracted to a dried up mushroom versus an anteater. Yeah? That's stupid. So, and besides, I mean, dicks aren't even... You're not supposed to look at it. You're supposed to feel it, right? I mean, why... Do girls really give a shit about what the, the penis looks like? I mean, as long as it's not diseased. It, pff, anyways. So I, I get sidetracked easily. Because I'm talking to myself, so I always feel a little bit crazy. So it's hard to hold a steady conversation. Anyways... So this is, it gets cut off, right? So let's say this is your dick. So now you have the head of your dick here, which is supposed to be an internal organ, all right? Right now it's pretty dry, calloused. If you look at it, there are actual calluses. That's what all those little tiny bumps are on it. It's like, um, you'll see like little cracks, crevices, kind of like, um, I mean, like, like if you look at, uh, like the dry season, maybe in the Sahara or something, you see all the, the dried mud and stuff on the ground. That's kind of what the front half of your dick looks like. So you have your dick skin all over here, your shaft. And then right here, there is a scar line from where your skin grew back together, okay? So from this part, this way, is all scarred. It's all calloused. There's, um, it's dry. It's supposed to be moist and wet you know and it's on the inside so it gets dry because it's on the outside okay so what you want to try to do is make this this part and this part you want it to be I picked a really bad towel this towel doesn't want to be my friend so look, you want it to fold over kind of like that okay so it's here let's say this is your line you want it to fold over like that. So how do you do that if your skin is tight? So have you ever seen like um, a kid who's maybe like 60 pounds or whatever, maybe like three and a half, four feet tall? Then you see him like 10 years later and he's like five or six feet tall, maybe like 160 pounds or whatever. And you're like, where'd all that extra skin come from? So when we grow, uh, part of the inside of our bodies, you know, our bones and whatever, is putting a small bit of, of stress on the skin. It's tight, uh, pulling it, right? And it's kind of like a rubber band. You pull the rubber band long enough, it will loosen up. And eventually, it'll, uh, you know, take up more space. It'll, it'll be bigger. So that's, that's a bad example. So with the skin, though, it's like also with like fat people. Where do the, when you get fat, all that extra skin comes some, from somewhere, right? So um, when there's tension on your skin, when it's getting pulled, it creates this thing called mitosis. I think it's mitosis. 
I'm not a biologist, so don't quote me on this, okay? So, anyways, it's where the skin gets pulled, and then it, it doesn't tear, but it creates, it's like really, really small micro tears. Okay, so that's why they call it like stretching or tugging. You're not actually stretching it, but it's kind of the same sort of thing. Uh, it's kind of similar, but when it's stretched, it creates new skin cells. So, the reason why I'm telling you about the front half and the back half, this is an inner foreskin, this is an outer foreskin. If you want to restore it, you're going to have to create new skin cells on the inner and the outer. Okay, so uh, to start with, you're going to do what is called manual tugging. Okay, that's what I would recommend because depending on how you were cut, you might have kind of a loose or a tight, you know? So like sometimes if you're having sex, maybe you might tear the girl that you're fucking. Like, like you might, she might bleed, she might get a little raw or say it's uncomfortable. That doesn't happen if you have a foreskin. Foreskins are there for a reason. I mean, um, you know, think about animals. You know, when animals fuck, they don't, they just kind of slide it in. They don't, like, have to look down and concentrate and put it in. They just mount and then they're in. Because the foreskin is magic. It's nature's lube, okay? Plus, it has all these different sensors on it and nerve endings. I mean, we really got fucked when we got our foreskins cut off. They, uh, all these nerve endings, right? They can actually, like, sense the pussy juice and all the estrogen and all the female hormones and everything. And then once they, once the tip of the foreskin, because, like, here's your dick, right? Your foreskin's like that. Once it touches the, once it touches the outer lips of the pussy, it just slides open like that so it makes it really easy for the dick to come in now since I've been restoring for a little over a year I don't have a foreskin completely but I, my skin is looser so sex is way more comfortable I don't need lube or um, a cloth or anything to jerk off with anymore which I always did you know every time I want to jerk off before and another thing if anyone that I know especially any of my family members are watching this and you think this is oh this is lewd he's saying some really you know gross shit or whatever I wouldn't have to be saying this if genital, if my genitals had never been mutilated and if that had never happened to anyone else. So, you know what? This sort of conversation is necessary until people stop fucking cutting up baby dicks. So anyways, uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is manual tugging, right? So, I there, there are a couple methods for it. I like to uh, basically kind of wrap my fingers like that around the base of my head. And then my others around the my mutilation scar, and I pull. So I'm pulling kind of like this. You get it? I'm pulling them apart. Now you don't want to pull hard because you can tear your skin if you pull too hard. Chill out. You just gotta create the tension. Okay, that's the only thing. Don't don't get rushed like this. This should be like a relaxing, almost pleasant thing. Okay? It's just like stretching for martial arts or sports or whatever. You don't. Um, you don't force yourself to stretch real big, real fast. You just ease into it, okay? Especially if you're new to this sort of thing. So anyways, I like to separate it from the inner foreskin and then the outer foreskin. So down here you have your balls, right? When you, um, if you pull forward like this, that motion from your balls, the skin on your balls, like the, the actual like scrotum sac part, is going to come with it, right? And um, the next method I'm going to talk about, T-taping, uh, you need to wear a cock ring sort of thing when you're uh, trying to restore with that. But I'll get into that in a second. So manual tugging, there's other methods you can use. Like you can take individual spots like, like this and just pull on it. But... Generally, I've heard people say that you can restore everything with this method, and it's a really, really good method to use. I, I do it like if I'm just sitting on the couch watching TV. I have like a, an exercise grip thing that I use to strengthen my hand muscles. I have um, like a resistance band that I might just pull on, and I might just tug on my dick skin, right? Why not? I'm in my house sitting on my couch. It's... Um, I mean, if you're going to be sitting there watching Netflix binging, you might as well be doing something productive, right? Now, there are different um, there are different routines that people might recommend, and I'm no expert on that. What works for me is I do manual tugging for like maybe two or three minutes at a time. Um, and I'll, I'll try like three different methods for like two minutes each. You know, so I might pull here, 
like that from the, the inner foreskin, then I might do on the outer foreskin, then I might do on the actual scar line, and then I might just kind of do uh, different ones, like sometimes I twist it. I don't know what that does, it just feels good. Um, and then another thing is, let's see, okay, the T-tape. Uh, I'm gonna make a video about how to make a T-tape because there's some, some tricks to it, but the general idea is Here's your dick, here's your scar line right here. You get a piece of tape that's about four inches. Well, you get two, two different four inch pieces of tape. You're gonna tape them together like that. So, like say here, the inside of my hand is the, uh, the sticky part, okay? You're gonna tape them together, but only halfway. So only half of them's gonna be taped together. So then you're gonna have this whole strip, right? Um, I. I'm going to make a video about how to make a T-tape, so this might sound a little confusing for now. You'll need um, like a piece of plastic to help you make it. But anyways, you're going to tape that around the, the scar line, and there's going to be another thing that you use to pull it, so you're pulling that forward, okay? So um, that's mostly stretching your outer. Now that's the one that you need a, a cock ring for. So like, if your balls are here, you would put the cock ring on the base. And it's not a normal cock ring. Like, I call it a cock ring. It might have a different name. Like, like penile rubber thing. But uh, <clears throat> it's not, you don't want to constrict the blood vessels. Like, I think dudes who, like, like Zoolander would wear a cock ring to make his dick look bigger. But this isn't what that's for. The cock ring is just to, like, it's not squeezing. It's just put there on the base so the ball skin doesn't, uh, I just put my dick in my face, so the ball skin doesn't stretch with it. I didn't know about this trick until a little further along the, the process and now I kind of have like an, a bigger ball sack than I did starting out but it's okay. There are worse problems to have like missing 20,000 nerves on your penis which is what happens when you get, you know, your genitals cut. Two and a half times the nerves of the clit, by the way. So anyways, you, um, when you're stretching with the tape, you're pretty much only developing the outer foreskin. You really want to do it evenly because you got to think long term, right? Now this is something that can take like four or five years. So don't get rushed. Um, you'll see, you should be able to see results after maybe a couple months. And it's, I shouldn't say see, you should be able to feel results after a few months, depending on how tight your, your cut was, okay? So like if you're real tight, maybe after a couple months, and, and I, I start with the manual tugging and the tape for a reason, because some of the other methods of tugging or of restoration you can't use, um, you can't do until you have a little bit of slack skin, okay? So you gotta use some of this stuff, the T-tape or manual tugging, the ones I'm talking about, to get some extra skin because the next thing I'm going to show you is going to uh, it's a little harder to do so a couple points on that though don't get discouraged okay you, the first thing that you're going to see with results is okay let's say this is the sock is the head of your dick and this is the base so a lot of people are just hoping that eventually it's just going to look like this within the first couple of weeks, you know, um, or however soon they, they are hoping for it to happen. What's really going to happen is this is going to maybe start looking more like this. Okay, so the skin on your dick is going to bunch up a little bit. It's going to be looser. Um, and, I mean, it's going to be more comfortable when you have sex, when you jerk off. I mean, you can jerk off without lube or whatever, like I was saying earlier. Um, so don't get discouraged if you don't have anything hanging over. And eventually, I mean, I did just the manual and the T-tape for a year, and it got me some, some decent results, some noticeable feeling results. I remember the first time my, my foreskin actually covered the head of my dick was I was on a bike ride with some friends in the woods, and I was, like, building up a sweat. I'd, I didn't exercise for, like, a year because I had this weird health problem that, that was really scary. But... Uh, I started getting back into exercise and I was on a bike ride. But yeah, the whole year that I was I was afraid to exercise, I was stretching, right? I was 
wearing tea tape all the time, figuring out tricks to it. Oh yeah, and also don't get discouraged because when you start out, you're gonna fuck up. You're not gonna understand how to do it. You're gonna it's gonna take a while to get used to it. So it's kind of like exercise. You know, you're not gonna be able to do a pull up the first time that you go to the gym. Maybe not, but after enough time, you will. So, anyways, um, fuck, I lost, I lost track of what I was saying. So, I started noticing results, right, after a while. But I was on a bike ride, and for some reason when I exercise, the skin would actually, you know, just kind of come over. It's kind of like, like shrinkage, you know, when that happens, but since it has the extra, extra skin, no, it's, it's not extra skin, it's the skin, that's another, uh, one of those worm worm terms I like to call them, where they'll say it's an e extra skin because if it's extra, then you can do without it, right? But it's not, it's not extra. It's the skin you were born with. It's your skin. A lot of people think that it belongs to them or it belongs to society. No, there's no actual debate on circumcision. It's because the person whose opinion matters most, the owner of the penis, is not taken into account. You know, it's something that's done against their will. Uh, before they can even make the choice or have a say in it. So, dudes, if you're circumcised and you're watching this and you're like, oh, this guy, he's, he's nuts. You know, that's, uh, I, I was circumcised and I'm just fine. Look, dude, you had no say over it. You have no idea what it's like to have a foreskin. Uh, you're just trying to backwards, what's it called, retcon or something? You're trying to, like, backwards, uh, uh, you have like Stockholm Syndrome, right? You're incapable of admitting that your parents really fucked you over. Because it, it's horrifying. It's scary. You know, it, it's, uh, it's something that you really just can't accept because no sane person can easily... I mean, it was hard for me to, to come to terms with it. Anyways, I ramble. You know, that's unrelated to how to restore your foreskin. But, I mean, you need to be patient so you can watch a 20-minute video, right? Anyways, your end goal... You want the scar to be at least on the outside because when your inner foreskin um, grows, when it finally covers and becomes an actual inner foreskin again, uh, all these calluses on the head of your penis down here, they're going to go away. Okay? You're not going to have... It's not going to be dry. It's going to be wet. And people say like, Dick cheese. No. It's it's exactly like a vagina. You know how a vagina is an internal organ? A penis also has its own internal organ. It's like the inside of your dickhead. Inside of your dickhead, right, in your in your pee hole, that I mean if you look closely, inside there is wet. And that's not just piss and, and cum that's uh, stuck there. That's just the inside of your body is lubricated, alright? The inside of your eyelids are lubricated and the outside is not lubricated. Your foreskin is a lot like your eyelids, okay? Whoa. So, uh, there are certain nerves on an intact, non-mutilated penis that you're never going to get back from restoration. But everything that is still on your penis is going to be improved, okay? Everything from the scar forward is going to get more sensitive. And it's not like it's adding sensitivity. It's restoring the sensitivity that your penis would have had had your rights been respected as a baby. And then the rest of your penis is going to have more motion, okay? So, or more uh, gliding motion, which makes sex feel a lot better. All right, give me one. I shouldn't say one second because you have a timer right there so you know if I'm lying. Okay, hold on. <clears throat> All right, here is currently the device I use to restore my foreskin. This is called a uh, a cat IIQ or cat two Q. I think it means like constant applied tension uh, two because it's like the second model. Uh, quick. Q, I think, means quick. So, you know I was saying you want to restore the outside and the inside? Because you want, if you, if the outside of your foreskin, or the part from, you know, 
remember inside outside the part from the uh, the outside if that comes on the inside it's not gonna magically become inner foreskin it's still gonna be outer foreskin just folded in so it's not gonna be as nice as having this part on the inside so once you have enough slack you're gonna use one of this one of these things okay so how this works is you have this sliding thing okay and you have to pinch here to bring it back down so you would take your dick and put it in there right put it in here you would pull the skin over you would take this guy stick it on like that your skin isn't here right you clamp it on so now your skin is stuck in there this is something I do almost every day sometimes I take days off because I, I heard that it's it's better okay now look now you would you have your skin in here right so the head of your dick is in here you can see it's kind of shaped for the head of a dick now you pull this forward okay now we have a um, there are other modifications to this where this is called the deep pusher this is something I ordered extra it helps give you an extra push the regular one for noobs is like straight like this okay so it's not as scary and this fits on perfectly to that one so there you have it this one is a little it's I mean they say it's cheap but it's like 80 bucks but fuck it'll last you until you have your foreskin back and it's easy to use it's comfortable it's uh it comes off really quickly so say you got it right here right your skin's like that I mean even if I'm wearing pants and it starts to hurt or feel uncomfortable I just I, f I feel around for the tip right here and I just slide and then push that down and it comes down really easily okay and uh, and then once it's down here I can just kind of push on this and try to pull that up and my skin will just pop out because that's what um, the tension of your skin coming back is what holds it pinched in so this is something I would recommend you look into if you were mutilated and you want your dick to feel the way it's supposed to. So anyways, remember, inner foreskin, head of your dick, outer foreskin. You want this part to come... Ah. Ah! You want it to come like that, right? Okay. I'm going to have to redo this. Give me a sec. Several moments later, here... You want it to come like that, okay? So then it'll be like this. Woo! Woo! See that gliding motion? So outer, inner. Ugh. Head. Outer, inner, head. Okay? Yeah, I know that's, that's shitty, but I don't have a, a fake dildo. Well, I guess a, it would be a real dildo with a fake foreskin on it. I don't have one of those. I've been in sex shops and asked if they have, like, artificial foreskins, but they don't. All they have is, like, weird ticklers and stuff like that. But it always uh, sparks an interesting discussion. So that's really all I have to say about that subject. Um, don't get discouraged. Don't get rushed. You can do... Just take your time. There are a lot of other methods out there that I didn't talk about. There's um, like a DTR, which a lot of people say is really good. It's a dual tension rod, but I don't use that because this one is very simple. It was, um, it just made more sense to me. There's also like an inflator, which they use uh, to heal phimosis in Europe. So what phimosis is, and this is another reason why these uh, these pro mutilation arguments where they say, oh, well, if you cut a baby's foreskin off, you won't get phimosis, or maybe it's to cure phimosis. You cannot diagnose a baby with phimosis because phimosis is where the foreskin can't fit over the head of the dick. Now, a baby's foreskin is fused to the head of his dick until he's like seven years old or whatever. So you can't say, oh, well, it can't come back because you shouldn't be pulling it back. It's supposed to come back on its own, kind of like how, like a puppy 
when they're newborn, their eyes are like they're they're sealed shut. If you were to take a newborn puppy and say, "Oh, well, his eyes are are uh, they're not opening, so we need to cut his eyelids off," it's kind of the same retarded argument. Okay. So, um, but anyways, they they might cut a little slit in the foreskin so it can spread out more, and then it you still have almost all the nerves there. You're not cutting off the whole foreskin, which is a complete waste. Then you also have uh, the ballooning thing, right? This one's kind of cool, which I have no idea how to do it or if I even have enough slack skin to do. But it's just kind of a neat thing to talk about, right? So they would stick this little tube in your foreskin and then pump it with like a, a balloon. There's like a little balloon in there. And it just balloons your skin out and stretches it in every direction. Pretty cool. But this is uh, the growth that you'll experience restoring your foreskin will be exponential okay when you first start out you might only have this much or say this much of skin to stretch so you can only stretch you can only grow that much more skin but once well like um, you can only grow this much more skin at a time but then if you have this much you have that many more skin cells that you can add because the the space between skin cells is is where like new skin cells form right I mean I'm I'm kinda bad at explaining these verbally I uh, I'm a blogger I think I'm better at blogging than making videos but I realize I'm too much of a perfectionist when making uh, blogs or videos and so I just procrastinate and I never put any ideas out there because I keep thinking oh well I'll write four-fifths of it but then I'll wait to perfect it later and then I just never get it done. So there you have it. That's, uh, that's all I have on foreskin restoration right now. That's how to grow your foreskin in less than 30 minutes. Uh, yeah, so like I said, you won't grow everything back necessarily, but what you have that is still there, which is your inner foreskin and your outer foreskin and the head of your, of your penis, will it'll feel a lot better. Okay. That's it. Peace.